Hey, I'm Mitch. And I'm Greg. And this is Side Note. A podcast where every episode we chat about life and what's stumping us right now. And then we research and splice in all the science and mind-blowing shiznit throughout so you are entertained while simultaneously learning. Today we are talking about astrology, which is a hot button topic here at the ASAP Science Office and probably where you are as well. It's very popular right now. Mitch is going to tell a story to begin with about a time when he got very intoxicated and went to a psychic alone. And then I am going to tell a time about when I became a palm reader for a short period of time and actually changed people's lives. In the end, we're going to have a debate about astrology. Mitch thinks that astrology is a bad thing. I think that astrology is not a bad thing. And of course, throughout, the science will be spliced in. And we're off. And we're <laughs> off. Well, no, we're on. We're on air. How's it going? Good. On air. Where does that come from? Aye, aye, aye. Like radio <laughs> Like waves the air, over air the waves. Air. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling? Because we've been <laughs> flying so much and usually you hurt I your back. It. Yeah, I did. I woke up with a sore back. I feel like the beginning of this podcast is just me complaining about my ailments. Um, I have a bad back and flying is not great for it. So yeah, just like sitting for like six hours twice our carbon footprint has been big. I you know. We need to figure out a way to improve that. Not which fly. Is not like work less. I can deal with that. We were just in Silicon Valley, which was so interesting because it was kind of, it was so weird. I think it's like everything that people think about. There was lots of men in jeans. Yeah. Um, White but, tees and jeans. And also it's like, there's no skyscrapers. It's just like, it's weird. It didn't seem like it was much, but I'm like, this is like the hub of like industry like and economy. all the money in the world. Yeah, and, ugh, it was so weird. But we were at this thing called the Breakthrough Prize, which was really cool. Yeah, it was it's the, the Oscars, Oscars of, of science. science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good. If you want to watch our live stream of the red carpet, you can find it on YouTube or like we would. Have we were Ryan Seacresting it up with scientists. It was pretty cool yeah. and like celebrity. There was lots of celebrities there. They flew the celebrities in on a private jet. Speaking of uh, like carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. In order to be at this event, and they would land them in the private jet right beside the event. Like the event Which was NASA. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It was NASA's <laughs> Ames or whatever. But they strategically made a runway close by so they could fly these Just celebrities. Like walk off and then walk back on. Yeah. After. It was. <laughs> that's the lifestyles of the rich and the famous. Comment corner. So we've been reading all your comments on Twitter, and we were thinking a really good way to get in touch with us is to, if you are listening to this podcast, screen grab it. I just did it with my hands the way you do on an iPhone. Press the circle in and the power button. Screen grab you listening to our podcast. Tag us on Instagram in your stories, and then we'll repost it on our own Instagram or on ASAP I Science. have to admit, I do not know how to do that, but you're going to teach me. I have never reshared someone's story, but I want to know how. Well, I don't it's know like, how. can you on Android? Exactly. I'm no, like, you can't. I don't want to make can. promises. Greg will because he has an iPhone. <laughs> I have an Android. But I'd love it. I'd love to see it either way. Even if it's not just a screen grab, you could like mess, like put something on your story that's about side note and we'll watch it and hopefully we'll be able to repost you're it. You're so interesting. Like you're so into technology, but then in some ways you're like just I like, just don't love social media. I oh, you're over 30. That's I'm, uh, it. Yeah. Since last year, I just stopped. Yeah. <laughs> you woke up on your 30th birthday and was like, how does one use a phone? So this comment is from. The Dictator on Twitter. I don't know if that... And it's spelled like D... Like D-I-C-K, Tater? Or it's actually D-I-K-T-A-T-O-R. I don't oh. know if that's... At Euchre D. <laughs> this is so funny. I think it actually is Euchre Red, but I saw Euchre because I'm an avid player of the card <laughs> game. Oh, okay. What's Trump? Not no, my No, or Euchred. Oh, Euchred. <laughs> <laughs> Again, maybe you he's can? really good at <laughs> playing euchre. Okay, so this says at Whale Watch Me PLZ, which is me. It said, I loved listening to you on today's podcast. By today, he means last week. I am internally screaming, yes, not yes. So he's probably straight. To your argument on calling out and standing up for victims who can't speak for themselves at the time they're being discriminated against. You are so well spoken. Thank you. And I, <laughs> I just. Am I well spoken? Or like, I'll you take are, it. yeah. Especially when it comes to stuff like you are educated on those issues and you care about them, Aww. so you are well spoken when it comes to that. I feel lots of times you aren't, though, girl. <laughs> yeah, I feel insane every time I open my mouth. So that was like, I don't know, it was a nice comment. That was a nice comment. Yeah, it's nice to hear. Where's my nice comment, Greg? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I was. I'm looking kidding. At I get lots of lovely comments. I just don't brag about them on the podcast. What? I just <laughs> you told me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I told I told Greg to read that comment. Okay, you <laughs> are. I can't tell if this is gonna be a tough episode. You're feeling sassy. I'm 
Brady today. Earlier in the thing that was edited out, he was like, what's your problem? Or what did you say? <laughs> Is there a problem? <laughs> Is there a problem? And I was like, are you a cop? I was scared. Okay. Oh, what did we learn this week? Okay, so... What I learned this week was about someone who we met at the Breakthrough Prize named Jocelyn Bell Burnout. Queen, 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 queen. Queen of science. So she discovered something called pulsars in the 60s. This mm-hmm. is a long time ago. It was exactly 50 years ago. Which is incredible. And it showed her and she built this amazing telescope that was huge, the size of 57 tennis courts, mm-hmm. in order to look using radio waves into the sky, into the universe. And she discovered, by looking at pictures, what we now know of as pulsars, which are really, really, like, dense. It's after a star dies, what's left over is this, like, really, really dense white matter or star. And they kind of show up. You, What is it? It's, like, Is spinning. that true? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I only knew the part that it was, like, a rotating star that gives off a certain kind of Yeah, so I think condition. it's still defined as a star. It is rotating. But, yeah, it's after, like, it's, like, say our sun exploded. It's, like, part of what would be, like, left over. Okay. Yeah, and it's so dense, she said, that it's only a 10 kilometers in radius, these things in the universe. They're really small. But if you took every single human on this planet and shoved them together... They would fit in a thimble of the density of how. how did that make sense? Yeah, like yeah, the <laughs> density like of every the wrong way. person on Earth in the size of a thimble is, is the density, density of those, those stars. stars, and they are spread across, not spread across, but times the distance that they are. Yeah, yeah. So the size, right? That makes sense. Uh, well, to <laughs> okay, me, la- but <laughs> okay, they're really dense. Okay, <laughs> that's like all a, you need to in know. In a physical way, they are not stupid. Okay, <laughs> and yeah, so she discovered them and. She was working under people at the time, two men of its science, its history. Here we go. And those two men got awarded the Nobel Prize for this discovery. Mm -hmm. And so 50 years later, she was getting this breakthrough award to sort of like, you know, give her the credit where it is due. She's Mm -hmm. been a physicist for so long since then. She's had such an amazing impact. And she was also (laughs) it's funny. She was the female version of being knighted and she made a joke. She's like, what is that? She's like being damned, being damned. <laughs> damned. Like, like yeah. men get knighted and women get like damned. Like she is whatever. a dame. Isn't yeah. Like she is, but then she didn't know like the adjective. She was like, am I damned? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Dame Judy Dench. For uh, and you know what she's doing with her $3 million she wins for that prize, giving it away to literally uh, try to spur on diversity in science, yeah, especially she's gonna, for women and minorities. Yeah. She's going to actually donate it as scholarships to help, also, she was saying really focus on allowing refugees to get money to study in the UK mm-hmm. because there's so many intelligent refugees who come to diverse countries around the world who don't get to actually work in the field that they're in. And something like science thrives on intelligent people. Mm-hmm. And if you just like stunt them because of logistics and bureaucracy, science won't thrive. So anyways, she is a queen. Beautiful. Jocelyn Bell Burnell. Look her up. Read her Wikipedia page. It's kind of the most amazing thing. Mine is not nearly as inspiring, but it's still exciting now, we all know that the ozone layer having a hole in it was a thing, but they just said it's, that it's, it's we know it's healing, but yeah. they think by 2030, the northern hemisphere might be like fully recovered. Wow. And then by 2060, the uh, Antarctica might be fully recovered as well. Wait, the hole, there's a hole in Antarctica? Well, I think the hole is big enough that it like cover. I don't I actually don't understand. <laughs> cut that part out. I, I just no, don't cut it out. We can. <laughs> what do you mean? Like I just two meant holes. I only read that 2030 was for the Northern Hemisphere <laughs> and 2060 was for Antarctica. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was just there was a big hole there caused by CSCs, which are called chlorofluoral carbon. Yeah, from our old um, fridges. Yeah, from like spray cans and foam insulation and stuff like that. So positive news, and it was y- the UN came out with a report that was like, this is a good example of countries coming actually together. working together. Um, and what global initiatives can do. I remember that. I remember my parents were making a point to not buy the whipped cream with the because <laughs> of CFCs whenever that started to become yeah. a thing in like the 90s. And they'd buy like, I didn't even know people knew you could do this. You can buy whipped cream in like a margarine container. And that's still oh. what my parents do. And whenever they would do it as a kid, I'd be like, that's no fun. Like, you guys are no fun. <laughs> but now I'm like, okay, the ozone layer is like clearing up. That's kind of cool. <laughs> You're like, can we get the cans back? No. Yeah, no. <laughs> Story time. Story time. Story time. Story time. Today, we are talking about astrology. And um, <laughs> we've got lots to talk about. It's an interesting <laughs> topic. Oh my God, I'm so scared of you. Because <laughs> <laughs> Greg will be debating for astrology. And I okay. Be against, but I mean, we'll get there. Okay, we'll get okay, there. Okay, okay, okay. Um, oh God, but my Story. Okay, I don't have a specific story related to astrology, but I feel like it's in the same realm as like all fake stuff, <gasps> <laughs> um, which includes like psychics and mysticism. Okay, yeah. So I just have this memory. I'm sorry for the shade. There's gonna be a lot of shade on this episode. Uh, 
I had a night out in Toronto. I think I was probably like early 20s. And I remember like partying, getting drunk and having fun. I don't remember. This was not early 20s. If this is what you're talking about when this is not that long ago. Anyways, continue. I don't even know <laughs> what you're like referencing. three years ago. Anyways, keep going. I don't think you know what I'm talking about. Oh. Um, so wasted, stumbling home. For some reason, I'm alone. I don't even know if Rick, I was. With... Yes, this was like three years ago. No, it was not, Gregory. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. Continue. What story are you talking about? Do you go to a psychic drunk? Yes. Yes. I was not that You're long. insane. <laughs> this is like maybe eight years ago. Oh my god. Um, because I think we went to the lab, and this is where I'm coming home from. I, I live at Palmerston. That's where I'm walking. Whoa! Oh my god! Give away his address. No, to I don't live Palmerston. there anymore. I'm so kidding. anyway, I'm walking home. Okay, this story is too long. No, uh, I am drunk enough, and like, okay, I've always grown up in a family that like believes in psychics and stuff, and so like, I've kind of been into that throughout my life, even though I know it's like kind of fake, but like, it kind of makes me excited. <laughs> and so I see this one on College Street in Toronto that's like at 2 a.m. open, and it's just like <laughs> psychics and palm readings, and it like looked nice and cool. There was like a crystal ball and a chair in the window, like. It was such a nice setup and i was like okay i'm gonna do this it was like 10 bucks or 20 bucks or something and i was drunk enough that i was like this is my late night food instead of that i'm gonna have a psychic reading so then i walk why are you looking at me like no i'm literally just laughing oh my god i am you are ready to attack i'm gonna (laughs) lose this debate i'm so scared Um, okay so i walk in and didn't know this, but i like walked into somebody's apartment so the thing in the window was like not the thing I walked into, I opened the door and there's just literally two people sitting on a couch watching TV. And I was like, oh, oh, uh, and then they were like, they were like, Susan, Susan. And I was like standing there for maybe like two to three whole minutes while they scream for Susan. I and you guess. didn't think about leaving or you're just, well, drunk? I've already walked into their <laughs> home and I'm standing there and clearly they're calling someone like I've come in. Now she's going to have to wait for her to come up. Like how drunk are you? Like, drunk enough. Like, it's 2 a.m. Like, I'm drunk, but I'm not... Like, I remember the story, so I'm not, like, so wasted. But I'm, like, it's too awkward for me to leave now. Oh, my God. And it was, like, just kind of weird. And I didn't know where I was, but I was, like, okay, hey, they're yelling for this lady. Susan, eh? Okay. It might have been a different name. Right. I obviously don't remember that fact. But Susan finally comes up after I'm, like, standing there for minutes awkwardly watching these people. What was she wearing? Like, so is she, like, looking like a A little, yeah. Psychic? She's, like, in, like, a little mystic outfit. But nothing, like, too crazy. She wasn't in, like, jeans and a t-shirt. She was in, like, a flowy kind of like. Oh, so she was thing. ready for the 2 a.m. drop in. I guess. I mean, her light was on saying, come on in. <laughs> so she finally, like, comes over and pulls me into that front window room, which I didn't realize was kind of like a separate room. Like, it tricks you. Wait, so people walking by can watch you from the street? Yes. <laughs> I don't remember. Maybe she, like, closed a little bit of the curtains when I was in there. Like, they were, like, light. You know, the curtains that light can come through, but, like, you can't really see. So I sit down with her, Susan, and basically she's like, do you have money? Oh, <laughs> my like, God. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, fair. I'm sure lots of drunk <laughs> people come here and just, like, get you to do the job and then run. Like, I got to pay you first. <laughs> do you have money? <laughs> She's a psychic. She should know. True. It's like, yeah, strike one, lady. Why didn't you know? She's like, I got my wallet on me. I uh, gave her the 20. And then she just, like, takes my hand and starts, like, tickling my palm and is like, ooh, you have a very bright future. I see lots of good things for you. Yes, very positive. I swear to God, did not give me one ounce of detail. Was just like saying nice things. Like anyone could have said this to me. She was just like, So oh, you didn't have an aha moment? No. She was like, Oh, you're very brave. You will have you are lots brave. of lots of things happening in you your do. life. You do. <laughs> okay, maybe she, okay, dead <laughs> on. Dead accurate. Um, and then eventually, like, I swear, two minutes go by and she's just like, thank you. How much? It was like 20 bucks. That's more than a poutine. Yeah, exactly. And a poutine lasts you longer than two minutes. It might have been 10 minutes. I you don't woke remember. up with less gut rot. But she though. literally then was just like, okay, do you want another one? <laughs> another like, what? Palm like reading? to do it again. Oh yeah. Oh, my God. And I was like, You're will you get a different answer <laughs> yeah. this time? You're still brave. Um, so then I awkwardly walked back into someone's living room. Watch them, you know, put my shoes on while they were watching TV and left and walked home drunk. Mitch's story really got me thinking about the actual business model of psychics. Because, like, how do they keep the lights on? It feels like when I walk down the street, I see a lot of psychics in expensive cities like Toronto or even New York. One thing to think about is that psychics are recession proof. 
During the 2009 financial crisis, Psychic's earnings increased exponentially with more seeking advice during times of stress. So obviously when the world is in chaos, Psychic's are an interesting place where people go to find refuge. In general, the Psychic Services industry is thriving. I love that it's called the Psychic Services industry because that's what it is and it sounds official. <laughs> it has grown 2.2% from 2009 to 2014 and it's expected to keep growing by another 3% in the next four years. Who knows what this is from? I mean, I recently saw one of the Kardashians, Kardashians, I always screw up their last name, like on that psychic, the world famous psychic show. Oh my God, people are going to, it's on E. People are going to be mad. They don't know what it is. But there's a popular culture trend right now around psychics that's going to help business. And astrology, mediumship, palmistry, reading someone's palms is a $1.9 billion industry. <laughs> So I don't know. We, we all have our university degrees. We're not using them. Maybe we should all become psychics. But still, I'm like, okay, yeah, there's a lot of money around it, but how? And so if you think about Toronto, where we are, the six is what Drake calls it, but I probably shouldn't because it's embarrassing. Okay, in Toronto, two journalists ran an expose of fortune tellers whose clients claimed that these like GTA, that means greater Toronto area psychics had defrauded them out of tons of money. So these reporters went in with hidden cameras and fake stories like, I broke up with my girlfriend and I want to get her back. And after their $40 like normal tarot card reading was over, the psychic suggested that for $1,200, they could remove the curse and bring his ex back to him or to her. Essentially, they were saying that for $1,200, they would get like herbs and oils and then professionally like use spirits to remove a curse. And then you'd get back together with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. And people did this. People paid thousands of dollars to literally be guaranteed that they would like through spirits and curses, get back together with their boyfriends and girlfriends. And obviously this did not work, but the psychics had the money. This is an example of psychics ripping people off. And not all psychics are like that. And I want to tell you about another business model for psychics. Okay, let's try something. Close your eyes. Visualize the type of person who frequently visits a psychic. Who do you picture, right? Who is that person? Who's that a psychic? Are they wacko? What are they like? Were they by any chance a Fortune 500 company CEO? Maybe not, but... It turns out CEOs love a psychic, okay? Psychics are big in the world of business where the money is. This is a good crossover for them. The biggest realtor in Toronto is named Jillian Oxley and she makes about $100 million a year in sales and she consults an intuitive counselor named Colette Baron reed Colette charges $800 an hour and $10,000 for a full day of her time. There's also a financial psychic named Laura Day who consults CEOs of Fortune 500 companies and was dubbed the Psychic of Wall Street. She warned her clients to pull out of the market a full year before the recession. And even the late Steve Jobs had a Zen master to act as a corporate spiritual advisor. And if you watch the show Silicon Valley, there's a character in that as well. There's obviously a market for these psychics and they're making money and they're recession proof. So when your family goes to psychics, because they still do, you just don't go. You don't participate. Well, see, I get disillusioned sometimes. Be disillusioned? No, I get, like, swayed sometimes because I've, like, some people in my family will tell me about the, like, amazing experiences they've had. And I'm like, well, was that just a bad Also, psychic? like, your sister's, like, on YouTube. I'm like, she's Googleable. That's what I always think. I'm like, the psychic could just Google Oh, them. literally, yeah. But <laughs> she told me that one time she just didn't tell them any of her name or anything when they booked the appointment. So you never know. Yeah. Uh, but I don't believe in it. Um, anyway, what is your story? Okay, so astrology? so interesting. I think I might, oh my God, last minute switch my story up Actually? a little bit. Yeah, because uh. you reminded me of something. So I used to work at a camp called Bayview Glen Plug. They're not sponsoring this. <laughs> Imagine this is sponsored by a day camp. <laughs> um, and so it was a day camp where I worked for a summer. And I remember they made me teach gymnastics, which was weird because I've never taught gymnastics. But the kids were so young that it was really actually fun. And at one point I had to teach dance, which I also didn't have any experience with. But Are you sure they weren't just like, you're gay. You can teach oh, dance, always. right? Yes. I also went to another <laughs> camp where they were, I was literally good at kayaking. Like, I'm not going to brag, but like, I'm really good at kayaking. And they literally would be like you're ahead of arts and crafts i'm like are you serious i've literally <laughs> never made a craft in my life i'm like okay and I, these kids would like be burning themselves on candles i'm like i don't know how to do this but okay anyways moving on <laughs> um 
Oh yeah. Also at that other camp where I taught gymnastics, they made me teach dance again, homophobic. Mm -hmm. But what I did for that class or that course is when they'd come, I turned all the lights off arts and crafts. They had to make fake IDs and they would come into the club and I'd like blast music and all these kids would dance like on tables and I'd give them water as like drinks and they'd like party. And it went over (laughs) really well. I got like a smoke machine and like everyone was like, he's a really king. I'm like, we're literally just pretending we're partying. Anyways. (laughs) That's really fun. I wish I did that as a kid. Yeah. So I, there was like a fair day or something and I had to figure out a booth and I was so hungover and I was like, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to palm read. And so I like, <laughs> wait, you, <laughs> you just spur of the moment. Yeah, we're like, well, it's a okay. camp. I'm going to palm read. It's a camp. It's like, today. I was like, what can I do? I'm so hungover. I don't want to move. I don't want to like try and figure out <laughs> materials. I'm going to palm read. <laughs> so I like put a table and like literally like a blanket over the table. So they'd have to come in under this table. So it was dark. And my friend Brian, who literally also does not care about like this camp at all, was like, can I palm read too? I'm like, fine. So these kids and counselors would come in and I would like, I'd be like, okay, this line is like your lifeline. And this line is your wealth line. And like, I just kind of made up the lines a little bit okay and i just i would just go for it like i would just be like right. you mu- no like i'd be like you for the kids whatever but for the <laughs> people who were tweens i'd be like you must like have a weird school life this year like were you bullied and they'd be like i i was bullied <laughs> like it literally like they would like start like 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 tearing up sometimes and then it became like known around the camp that i was like palm reading really well oh <laughs> and people started to like line God. up for my little thing and it, it, it kind of made me realize like this is actually like bs like i have no i did like i'm literally making this up and there is some way that people you started are a spinning cult. it there's yeah. literally like 30 kids in toronto who the course of their life has been defined <laughs> by what you told them they were like um but my um palm reader said that i should follow the finance because my line was really long for finance and now they're frigging and i was like again i didn't care that much about this job and the lifeline one i'd be like oh i'm honey you got till 30 (laughs) like i'd be like you're gonna die young and they'd be like oh my god really and i'd be like yeah you might want to like go to mount everest base camp sooner than you think (laughs) like that is so (laughs) awful but i just really hope that they knew i was kidding because i was kind (laughs) of like really that's famous last words of every psychic i just hope they knew i was kidding (laughs) i know they paid four hundred dollars for this but i hope they know i was kidding what does science have to say about palm reading or otherwise known as chiromancy Well, unfortunately, there is no scientific proof behind palm reading, but there are definitely things we can glean from an individual based on their hand's features. Lines on your hands form in the womb after about 12 weeks. There are creases in the skin that allow for more dexterity and make it easier to grab and hold objects. So most people are born with three main lines, which in palmistry are called the headline, the heartline, and the lifeline. Their length, curvature, and consistency are said to describe one's nature, much like celestial bodies do for astrology. For instance, if your heart line is long and curved, this is supposed to indicate that you're unapologetically driven by your passions and desires. Though studies have shown that the thickness, frequency, and prominence of these lines is genetically determined, there's no evidence that they indicate anything about who we are and what will happen to us. One out of 30 people, however, may have one dominant crease instead of three, which may indicate abnormal development and may be a sign of a developmental disorder such as Down syndrome, fetal alcohol syndrome, or Turner syndrome. But palm readers often also look at the shapes of the fingers and fingertips, with each finger apparently representing a different aspect of our personality. For instance, the thumb represents the drive to succeed, while the ring finger is said to denote creativity and self-expression. Whether the digits in question are bent or straight indicates whether or not the corresponding characteristics within us are weak or strong. Which sounds a little far-fetched, but our fingers can actually tell us a little bit about ourselves. Scientists have zeroed in specifically on the ratio between lengths of the index and the ring fingers in what is known as the digital ratio. Turns out this digital ratio is linked to levels of testosterone and estrogen in the body. More specifically, index finger length is positively correlated with estrogen, while ring finger length is correlated with testosterone. This is why females tend to have longer index fingers and higher digit ratios, while males tend to have longer ring fingers and lower digit ratios. 
In addition, women who are trans were found to have digit ratios more comparable to cis women than cis men. And this has been linked to many things in both men and women. Males with a lower ratio, for instance, were found to be more fertile, more aggressive, and they tended to have higher aptitudes for music and sports, while males with a higher ratio were found to be more at risk for heart disease. Women with a higher ratio, on the other hand, were found to be more fertile, but also more at risk for breast cancer. Interestingly, men and women with schizophrenia were found to have higher digit ratios, while lower digit ratios have been found more often in those with autism. So to summarize, the practice of palm reading has little to no scientific basis, but that's not to say that our hands and fingers can't tell us a little bit about ourselves. Also, the story I was going to tell is so short, I'm just going to tell it, but we made a video about, like, is astrology real or not? That was, like, supposed to be fun, because obviously I was like, I I've had a change of heart, and we'll get to the debate. <sighs> but um, I think that it doesn't make sense that celestial <laughs> objects impact your personality, <laughs> and I made a science video about it that was on Aesop Thought that was very much, like, astrology from a scientific perspective is not real. And then the comments, the second we released it, were just like, oh my god, Greg's a Libra? Because, like, I mentioned I was a Libra. Like, oh every God. comment, it was like, oh, my God, of course Greg's a Libra. Like, Greg is such a Libra. And I'm like, did no one watch this? And I'm not kidding. Like, a majority of the comments are about the excitement or the disappointment or, like, the aha, uh -huh, of course moment that I'm a Libra. And the whole plot of it is supposed to be, like, this isn't real. Anyways, that was going to be my story. I'm glad I found out the other one because that was it. Um that's awful you literally destroyed some kids lives I okay i'm so someone one of them's listening to this right now being like oh my god i need to literally change my whole life yeah like <laughs> from mount everest base camp listening yeah, like, to this no! like wait oh my god i spent all my money on this and i didn't go to university um one thing i looked up was that did you know aries which i am and libra which you are are literally like opposite star signs well i mean we've been having some troubles there mitchell yeah. maybe we're just not meant to be like probably like our compatibility is We'll see. Anyway. See, that's we, why I'm glad. Oh, no. I. Oh, here, here we go. go. We here have we the go. debate coming up, here right? Are go. you ready to debate? Are you I ready am. to tear each other I am down? I'm literally ready to tear it down because you know what? Thinking that astrology isn't real is homophobic. Let's get Whoa. into it. Let's get into it. <laughs> okay. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will be having our intense astrology debate. We just want to take this time to thank you all so much for listening to this podcast and engaging with us online. And we just want to ask you again to make sure you subscribe, make sure you leave a comment and like it wherever you can, however you're listening to your podcast. That really helps with the algorithm so that other people see it. But again, we started this not that long ago. It was a project that we really wanted to do. We're having so much fun with it. We love interacting with you. We love making these podcasts. So we're just thrilled and excited to know that you're actually listening and enjoying them. So essentially, thank you. Are you ready, Greg? Okay. We are okay. about okay. to debate no. astrology. <laughs> and the <laughs> positions will be, Greg, for astrology. I've had a change of heart. Ignore my... Mitch, against astrology. Yeah. Um, okay. We can talk... No, I think we need to establish <laughs> that we have been given these positions, right? So, like, as much well, as you I might... Have, no, I have you had might, you a change of heart. You are actually fighting for it now. Okay, that's totally cool. I, I have had a change of heart. I'm just establishing... Like, In a context you, that you'll see. Okay. 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 Fair enough. Okay. okay. Are you ready to yes, start your debate points? I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. Greg. My voice isn't high because I'm nervous. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Greg fighting for <laughs> astrology. Uh, you can start now. Debate time. Okay. So I remember someone telling me this fact that they thought that they were so angry that there was a part of the newspaper that wasn't just science information and said it's astrology and all these people have gravitated towards and it's dangerous and it's so bad. And I really felt this way. I mean, I made a video on YouTube about this. But I've had a change of heart recently after talking to Sal, someone we work with who I respect, who loves astrology, and even Rachel, who I believe is so intelligent and I respect a lot too. And they've talked to me and I've had a change of tone. Let's hear it. Okay, so I think that there is too much like resentment against astrology from a very masculine part of science trying to like take away from people's enjoyment of the subject which i was a part of and i think people turn to astrology when they are stressed okay it has been proven to help people cope it's a device that helps people cope with the world around them and i think that that is a good thing because millennials who are really catching on to it it's definitely trendy are the most stressed generation one minute uh, 
that we <laughs> I'm stressed <laughs> that they're the most stressed generation and therefore I think that's why they're gravitating towards it like religion's not something that we really care about that much anymore it's also a very damaging thing that I think astrology is like an interesting place to come in and allow people to feel connected to something that isn't doing that much damage okay spirituality is positive for your mental health and I do believe that it is spiritual the universe was created 13.8 billion years ago. That is such a scary thought. We're only on this planet for 80 years. How can we reckon with that? Astrology is just a fun way to help us try and feel seconds. some sort of purpose in this like insane shithole that is the earth and the patriarchy that we are underneath. So I also do feel like Western science is something that we all try and say is right, you know, seconds. but it is completely biased. It's always been controlled by a specific fundamental framework that Five. works, but is rife with bias. And I think that astrology being put down by it all the time is unfair. Time. Good job. Okay. Interesting perspective. Interesting perspective. Um, oh, is he shaking in his boots? <laughs> she's oh. shaking, girl. She's, I literally am drinking out of a cup that has the Aries stuff. Oh, my God. On and it. when we got these cups given to us because we did a talk, we were like, they don't know us because we, uh, yeah. they thought it was science y because of the stuff. But I like, I like, yeah, I like that it is the con a constellation. But I'm too, I'm too embarrassed to bring that anyway. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be about. Does it? If it's Aries, could that not just be a constellation? And I don't know. Wow. Sounds like someone's into astrology. <laughs> okay. Are you going to time me or what, girl? Uh, I'm going to time you, girl. Okay. Three, two, one. Vamos. Okay. So I had to like look up a lot about my horoscope for this. So it turns out that Aries, a.k.a. the Ram, a.k.a. Mars or fire or whatever the hell, uh, we apparently never do something just because others do. And so that's what I'm going to do right now is go against this hipster grain and tell you why astrology is trash. So are we really going to look to the stars and pretend their position has some magical effect that has literally never been measured in the history of time? Like I can forgive people thousands of years years ago who believed in this crap but you've had like thousands of years to just put like a single study to show that it is actually accurate give me one ounce of proof like it's too bad there's not a form of science where we actually study the stars oh wait it's called astronomy and there's literally thousands of papers that look into how the stars actually impact the earth's body and our bodies on Earth. So there is actually some evidence that the season you're born can affect your gene expression, but there's zero, re I repeat, zero One minute. quantitative evidence for star alignment affecting you as a human. <laughs> But Mitch, maybe science just doesn't know yet. Fine, but stop acting like it's the gospel and that if science doesn't know, you somehow have all the answers of exactly how your day and year and month affect your body and everyone else around you. It reminds me a lot of like seeing aliens and believing in miracles. Interesting how there's no proof for those either, even though so many people talk about them. And why would you want your future to be determined? Like, I mean, don't you want it to be in your control? And I swear to God, if you say that's because I'm an Aries, like, get over yourself. <laughs> uh, there's also something called the Barnum effect where people take general statements and apply them to themselves but not recognizing it's a general statement. Uh, finally, there's something called cognitive bias uh, or like subject validation. So once you make it personal, you're more likely to think it's factual. At the end of the day, I think astrology is exploitative in, nat exploitative in nature and just part of the capitalist society preying on people's hopes and fears and that's why astrology is trash. Wow, a little bit of capitalism to a little, <laughs> little extra salt and pepper capitalism. Okay, yeah. okay. yes, girl, you seem to care Western so much. Western science is quite capitalist. <laughs> I must say, my soul. <laughs> Well, that's a straw man argument because that has nothing to do with what I was saying. I can we end this now? I don't want to keep going. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> um, I have one other thing I want to read because I didn't have time to in my debate. But oh wow, is it in, two minutes or is it two minutes and thirty seconds? Well, What's okay, going on let's here? talk. And I'm just I'll, just, I'll try go, to splice it in casually. Go, go, go. The um, people need to know. Okay, across several centuries of testing, the predictions of astrology have never been more accurate than expected by chance alone. One. Of the more renowned examples is the double-blind chart-matching test conducted by Sean Carlson. So they took 28 astrologers and were tasked with matching over 100 natal charts with the people's corresponding psychological profiles, and they were unable to perform any better using astrology than if they had matched the charts and profiles at random. So that's the biggest test that's ever been done on astrology. Sorry, those words were too big. It literally what? 
I'm kidding. It doesn't work is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> I can feel you that it's I don't think we have to like demonize it, but it's unfortunate. Like the thing you talked about, like in newspapers, there's a section for astrology in every newspaper, but there's not for astronomy. I just think that's sad. Like it doesn't mean it's necessarily doing harm. I'm so mad I brought that up because I totally agree. Yeah, because it is just like, well, why don't we have a science section that like actually teaches us about something real? that has proof t- behind it. Like, Well, I went on this uh, app called CoStar, and I looked at okay. my uh, sign, and I don't know, kind of accurate. No, it's true. I actually, like, before this, I went on, like, an internet <laughs> website just to see an internet website. People um, always meet, read me yours, and I'm like, that's me. I know. I read mine and was literally <laughs> like, whoa. And then I stopped and thought about, like, am I just generalizing? And I t- pretended it was yours, and I was like, does not work. And then I looked at Libra. But yours worked for half of it, but then the second half, I was like, this does feel general. Like, I know. Maybe. I really, when I do read horoscopes, when it doesn't work, you just forget it. It's, it, it's, it is confirmation bias. Like, when yeah. you read the things that, like, hit you, and you remember or they, they have to do with you, you, you right? stick with you. Yeah. It's, it's like the opposite of how we only really, like, really, we really focus on negative comments. Yeah, and that's kind of like confirmation, is that confirmation bias? Is yeah. That what it's called? Confir- like, yeah. when you're, like, driving and you see, like, all the cars going faster than you, but it's because you don't actually look at the cars behind. Like, yeah. the ones that you're passing, you don't keep track of. You only keep track of the ones that you see going further ahead. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like this, yeah, I feel that when people read horoscopes, I love like going and testing people and I did this once to you like a little while ago where I read your horoscope but I was actually reading mine to see if you were like that's so me but then you actually like no that's not me at all (laughs) it didn't work but in general they've done tests where people will all have the exact same test or the exact same like readings and then they'll be like who thought theirs um like match with them and then then most people put their hands up and then they all have the exact same one okay so one thing I would say is that positivity and like having a positive outlook on things is really important and it actually can physiologically like change slash help your body do things that if people are using it to be positive i think that there is a way that it could really help them and i also think when it comes to astrology how do you know that there's not (laughs) negative impacts because people i want to (laughs) go like in my mind like people could use that argument for other forms of beliefs that also have negative impacts in the world like religion's a perfect example it does a lot of bad in this world but it also does good and so people justify the bad by saying oh but look like it does make people happy it it does some people like who are religious give more to charity but to me i'm like yeah but i just don't think it justifies like the absolute hatred that religion also causes in this world okay well i was hanging out with some of my queer comic friends recently and they said that like astrology is very big in the queer community i didn't know this but that's why i I think if you're against it you're homophobic well maybe okay (laughs) what might be true is that it provides an alternative for people who are marginalized to like be part of a different community that's kind of mystical and brings them like their own self what you said exactly yeah exactly no okay <laughs> like i don't i love how i feel like if i just sit here quietly eventually you're gonna talk yourself because <laughs> i'm actually the one who probably believes in <laughs> because it because also we used to do tarot re- you used oh, to do yeah. tarot no, no. readings with yeah, I, and I would go in and you and our roommate would do them and I'd be like this is so stupid and you got in many fights with me be like Greg you're no fun you know what you're also not spiritual like you would get mad at me because I'd be like this is <laughs> such a waste of time I'd rather watch a TV show or read a book like what are you doing and you got mad at me so I'm like you have it in you because <laughs> it is fun like I want to like I love playing like Ouija board like when I was younger I used to like always love playing Ouija board and, and your stuff. family loves psychics it's in your blood yeah it's in my blood but. Okay, I have no problem with people if they can objectively say, like, oh, no, I just, it allows me to, like, think about my life and to reflect on things and be aware. But I I just hate, like, the determinism from it, like, like that you are what the these things say you are and that your future like oh this month something's in retrograde mars or venus or whatever and i'm gonna have a bad let me guess your computer stopped working Uh, like possibly but like that's probably random chance if we actually studied it and it sucks because you know the mind games can't like the placebo effect is powerful and if someone thinks that they're in a rough patch because a horoscope says so that could also negatively impact them just as much as it could positively if if they're being told like you're gonna have a great month so I don't know. I think it's – I agree that, like, the science space is has and is especially, like, masculine, hetero, um, whatever. And there's a weird – again, I'm taking this all from a conversation I had once, and Rachel brought up an interesting point because I think she's, like us, very interested in science. But also, the she said that the time of the year that you're born – 
could maybe have a really interesting impact from like an environment perspective. Okay, but I don't have a problem like that is, and I even said that in my argument. Like it can, uh, the time of the year you're born affects gene expression, and oh, uh, we see like certain animals are born at certain times. Whatever that could be true, but what but bothers yeah, me is that then people not. like like say then it say could that. do this, don't say that. It but has it, like to do with. stop pretending you know the result it has, right? Like there's literally websites that are okay. It's one thing to say, look. We know the moon has an impact on the earth. It literally creates the tides and it does so much. Because I saw this tweeted once. Why do you think the moon can't have a, an effect on our bodies? And yeah. it's like, it it might. Like, no one is saying that it's not possible. I'm not saying it, the stars couldn't have an impact on us. Just stop pretending you know what that is. Like, if you can't do a study and show me that with any evidence that you can accurately or predictably, like, call the right answers, then stop arguing for it i literally can't say anything because <laughs> i'm just wanting to like get in on it and i think it's like i do think it's true like i think one thing is that science is so beautiful science is a story science is a field of research that is like the most beautiful spiritual thing in many ways that it's too bad that it can't have the same impact that astrology does because i really do see that astrology is such a trendy thing right now and the only thing and this is on your point this is not doing astrology <laughs> that gets me so disappointed is i'm like imagine there was this like weird trendy movement around science like it's mm -hmm. just like that's what and i don't think they have to be antithesis of each other but there is like this weird like unscientific aspect of it where i'm just like there is something so beautiful about science that it's like because it has to do with stars and do with these things that we look at with telescopes and through the lens of science it's just like disappointing to me when i'm like oh yeah, yeah but this actually comes back to not how being, like yeah. science can give you those kind of predictions too like we're listening to this audiobook about time and how different times of the day how much it impacts the things that you'll be better at, even if it's just it, a few percentage okay. points. Like I'm science, going back onto my sign. <laughs> so I'm just saying science <laughs> can provide, maybe not, but I it, think it's because astrology provides like magical overestimations of things that that's why it's more attractive. Like science can't tell you where you'll be over the course of the next month, right? Nothing really can. And that's why, that's why these kind of things people really gravitate towards because no one can tell them that but somehow this magical field can okay so one thing i'm gonna say again back with my hat on in defense of astrology and it really made me think when you brought up this book science though as well predominantly dominated by straight men really does jordan peterson's a great example get spun around to be spoken in absolutes mm -hmm. that people take even that book that we're reading about time I have enough of like a critical m brain and spend my whole life reading science that there's a lot of things that this man says that I'm like, oh God, grain of salt with that sentence because yeah. there's so many other variables. But they're trying to make an exciting science book that changes your life. And I don't think that people are as critical of this book called The Science of Time than they are of astrology within the science community when there are. I don't think that's a fair comparison i think i do but think agree. about it think of the times that he says things based on a study that is extrapolated so much and i've been reading a lot about right like, but at least it's based maybe on one study instead of none but that's study. even more dangerous because people are still right. leaving with like this word of science in front of it which is why in asap science videos we always try and explain the study and what it explained because if we just say this is what science says then that's when you start to get into the same realm of astrology and reading this recent book about the impact of genetics and environment and how they work together in this like complex way that we can't really understand it's so confusing that i'm like there are so many studies out there that pop science takes and says that are so inaccurate mm -hmm. that it's on the same brand as astrology in some ways yeah, except it's get, under the guise of science i can get behind that like a lot of science is spun for personal gain or just to cre to have a narrative that m like matches up with people's preconceived And I think notions. a lot of people in science have a lot of fun making fun of astrology because it's so obvious to them that it's not real. But there's so much like maybe even more dangerous science that pe they're like taking in as real that's just as not actually accurate. I feel like half of the time I get on this podcast, I'm talking about the patriarchy. I'm like a walking feminist meme. I know this, but I have to talk about the patriarchy because it literally impacts almost all dimensions of our society, including science. Let's go back to 1820 when people started studying phrenology. 
Phrenology was the study of human personality and human nature based on the measurements of your skull. Phrenologists believe that the shape of our heads was indicative of our temperament. And by taking measurements, they could tell if someone had criminal tendencies, high intelligence, or if they were more submissive. So today, this is completely debunked pseudomedicine, like 100% garbage. But in the 19th century, it held a lot of power and was considered a legitimate science. Phrenology's dark history includes using it to support racist and sexist stereotypes, and it is even linked to Nazi eugenics. For example, phrenologists claim that women had heads that were larger in the back and therefore had underdeveloped organs, making them incapable of success in art and science. This was used as a justification to exclude women from participating in politics and voting. Just reminding you again, there is currently no support for this. And today, yeah, scientists reject these notions. But it kind of makes you wonder how researchers will look back at us in 200 years and laugh at the sexist ideas we perpetuated through pseudoscience and things that we thought we knew. Today, sexism in science is a bit more nuanced but it often involves the exclusion of women as subjects of research. There have been so many instances when I go to research an ASAP science video where we don't end up including how something physiologically affects women because the research doesn't exist. Researchers are beginning to acknowledge this too. In fact, the Heart and Stroke Foundation's latest ad states that women are under-researched, underdiagnosed, and overdying. Women's heart disease tends to appear in the smaller blood vessels of the heart rather than the major coronary arteries. This means that their symptoms might not fit the classic textbook picture of a heart disease. Classic heart attack that men experience is crushing pain on their chest, but women are more likely to experience chest discomfort, shortness of breath, fatigue, indigestion, nausea, or back and neck pain. Angiograms are not effective at diagnosing the types of heart attacks women are more likely to have. Stress tests also are less sensitive for women. On a personal level, this breaks my heart. A woman I love deeply had an angiogram only days before she had a heart attack, and her results came back perfect. It makes me so sad and angry that these tests couldn't have helped diagnose her and prevented her heart attack. I am, however, optimistic that things are shifting, as more women are entering STEM fields and more women are demanding the care that is our right. The argument that I would have back to that is like, let's not just believe in astrology because science has flaws. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there are definitely flaws in the science, like, community in the scientific process like in a lot of ways science is troubled and it is really homogenous and people think they can use it and don't realize how complex so many things are like stop pretending you know the answer but that isn't a good enough reason for me to believe in astrology <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and support it when we can say like but there just isn't really evidence for it well um, my uh, i would say okay oh, go ahead i was just gonna say my gas tank's empty i don't have anything else. i would well this is kind of to your point <laughs> okay and thanks. you brought up jordan peterson um which I saw someone discussing him recently and how like secularism in the science world hasn't provided like uh, a meaning to life for a lot of people, which like religion has in the past. Like people have feel like they have purpose, but we're entering into a world of information and people being like, I'm, I believe in science, but they're maybe feeling a little bit left behind in terms of like, what is the purpose of life? And so I think that's like you brought up Jordan Pearson and science in the same sentence, which doesn't really make sense because he's actually like really religious. He uses science. I know. But then he, he all, his followers are also people who are like looking for something more yeah. than that. He, but and I think astrology that he uses science fills in that a same void like astrology yeah. gives you a sense of belonging it gives you a sense of order and science tries to do that but it can't do that in a big way i know you have to be so way. comfortable with disorder and chaos and not knowing everything to be interested in science it's true and that's why i think it's so it's really hard about yeah it. and it, it's kind of like like if you go to therapy and it's like sometimes it's not about fixing things it's about re like yeah. accepting that things are not like sometimes they're really shitty and sometimes they're really good oh my god and science is kind of like that too where it's like it sometimes hurts to be like the truth isn't just this beautiful thing that makes sense it's actually like a huge mess that 
or not even a huge mess, but no, it's it just is. like it, a yeah. huge variation of things that have no real meaning. And we don't know why things we might know that something happens, but we don't know why it happens. Like that happens all the time in science. We're like, we know that this is the result of like mm-hmm. cell replication, but we don't really know it's how. Like, we don't know why people sleep. We literally yeah. like the thing we do for like eight hours to twelve we hours. We don't know a day. why. No, oh. sleep scientists literally have no idea why any mammal sleeps. Why? I thought you were gonna say why any man sleeps, and I was no, like, huh? It's like why would it be useful to fall asleep yeah. for ten hours? You're so vulnerable. Obviously, it's so important. They know reasons that things that it helps, but it's like, why would it not have evolved Evolve away? Away, because you're so. Oh wow. Um, so, so it's like, things, yeah. Th- when we do find answers, there's even a reason they might not for that. Be, we just don't know it. But yeah, it's, I'm just like on the fence of letting people have their autonomy to believe what they want and follow the passions that they want, but then also being like, I don't know. Like we don't know the negative consequence yeah. of believing things that we can kind of show are actually false. And it kind of finally brings me back to my capitalistic point. I think it takes advantage of people. Not everyone. I do believe there are probably psychics and palm readers who are genuinely believe themselves that they are like but they the have first a skill. thing the psychic said to you was how do you have money yeah and i don't yeah. blame that person i was like a drunk person in the middle of the don't night. go to the psychic on college well, but um <laughs> i'm sure there's lots <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know what i mean like yeah. it it's a it's a huge industry. industry and of course there's gonna be people who take advantage of the fact that they can sell you snake oil and when I found out recently that the price of a psychic, when you told me like what your sister and mom pay, it's like a hundred dollars. Well, I an made hour. that up. I just I think oh. that is probably what you uh, oh. hundred bucks. Yeah, I, I just assume. Either way, yeah. it's probably enough money that I am like, oh my god. Yeah, it's like go get a <laughs> massage, okay? <Yeah>. Like <laughs> from Anyways. a friggin' like established professional who literally went to school for their job. <laughs> We got, I'm like, should we do a debate on that? No, okay. That I'm I'm at I'm at a gas. I'm at a steam. I feel like you have some really good points. I think this is such a contentious issue, and it is really so popular. Like nothing I've seen before. And like the circles in comedy, for example, so many jokes are now about astrology because so many people believe it. It's really interesting. People our age have gravitated towards it, and I think it really you're maybe onto something. It's a spiritual way of trying to understand the world, even though. Like it's an it's, e- it's like the, it's like when the best science communication is taught to you. Like astrology is like it finds a way to connect. We need to. Teach to how do we? How like, do we do that? I'm with like science? I want to be a better science communicator. It's so hard. It's so uh, hard. It's so hard when you can't say like I have literally every answer to I every know. question in your life. But we're like, but you have to be okay <laughs> with not knowing the uh, whatever. Like, be okay with being depressed and not having any answers. <laughs> Next week you won't even. I want to know people listening because we have a relatively like science filled audience. Do any of them believe in astrology? Yes. Do you yes. guys believe, guys and girls and non-identifying people, do you believe in astrology? Okay, so hashtag side note podcast. Let us know. We read all of those. Tag us on Instagram in your stories. Let yes. us know. Share them. Maybe we can like share a clip of someone Ooh, in here. Please and, like, give a tweet me or a clip or whatever. Defensive you astrology. Might, yeah, you might I want to hear those arguments. They don't have to necessarily be scientific, but the way Greg was like, well, a, an appeal to the emotional side of it is also equally valid, I think. I mean, I'm emotional. You just need some support. I, know, I listen to Taking Back <laughs> Sunday every day. Okay. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. If you want to tweet us or it's had to have, listen, tell, blah, blah, tag us on Instagram. <laughs> Did I just have an aneurysm? <laughs> um, at Mitchell Moffat and at Whale Watch McPLZ. You'll hear from us next week. Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>